Hey, it's James here. Today we're going to have a look at how you can use player preferences within Unity to save your data. Now, first of all, I'd just like to say when this is really good to be used. So if you've got a game like League of Legends and you've got all your player stats and levels as they're going up, you'll want to really save that server side. And so something like player preferences wouldn't be suitable for that. However, if you had a game like Monument Valley, where it's just a single player game on a device, you might want to save the level progress on the actual device, in which case player preferences would be quite suitable for it. However, in that same Monument Valley example, if you wanted to save it so that it was accessible across all your devices, you still want to save it in some sort of server on the cloud. And in that case, player preferences wouldn't be. When player preferences are always used, is when you've got things like your audio level, your music, any sort of settings that you have with your game are specific to the device. They're not sensitive in any way, so you definitely want to save those using player preferences. And then your other ones, you can make a choice. I generally just use player preferences because I'm not that worried about somebody coming in and editing and ruining their own single game player experience. So to do this, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about player preferences and how to use it, and then you can make your own decision. So I'm going to start by going to my main camera, setting my background color to black, and choosing a solid color. I'm now going to go to Game Object UI, and I'm going to bring in an input field. Just import the essentials. Next, I'm going to go to the canvas. Next, I'm going to go to the camera and choose screen space camera. I'm going to select the camera. I'm going to check the planar distance as one. I'm going to click on the canvas and press F. I'm going to bring my gizmo size down. I'm going to grab the rect tool. I'm going to make this input field a bit bigger. And I'm going to make this text far larger. And now this is going to be my input field username. Now to demonstrate the player preferences, I'm going to add a few more of these UI components. We won't code them all at the same time, but I'm going to put all the UI that we need down right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add three buttons. So go to UI, Text Mesh Pro button. Make this button a bit bigger. And I'll make the size of the text on this button larger. And I'm going to duplicate this button twice. I'm just going to pull each of the duplicates down. And I'm going to change the text on each of these buttons. And finally, I'm going to rename the buttons so that we can tell the difference easily. And now selecting the canvas, we're going to add the UI text. Again, let's make that a bit bigger. And we're going to need two more of these. I'm just going to line them up next to each of these buttons. I'm going to rename the buttons. So now we have all of the UI components that we need. I'm just going to explain what we're going to do before we attempt to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to save one string here, one integer here, and one float here. You'll be able to input a string to save in the player preferences here. And for the integer and float, we'll just generate a random float and save it in those places. 
and then we'll have a way to clear all of our data so that we can start again from scratch. So let's make a folder for scripts. I'm going to wait the C sharp script called save system. The name isn't that important. Double click this to open it in Visual Studio and we'll add some code. First up, let's add the Text Mesh Pro library. Next, we'll need a reference to each of those text fields so that we can change the text in them. Finally, we'll also need the input field because when the user inputs the username, we want to be able to read that. Now we're not going to need the update function, so let's get rid of that. And so for the username, we're going to need two main functions. We're going to need one function which runs on start, which will set up the preferences. And then we'll have another one to actually set the username. Now because we want the setup text to run every time we start, let's just make that run from the start function. So in our setup text, what we're going to want to do is check if there's anything already saved in the player preferences. And if there is, we'll display it onto the string. And if not, we'll give it a default value. And this is really easy to do with player preferences. They have a thing called has key, which checks whether it has a key or not, or which means has it been used or not. A has key is just a string and it's just the name that you gave for that particular variable that you saved. In this case, I'm just going to call it username. So if we've already got some data and username, we'll just display it on our text username text object. And to do this, we use get string. You just give it your name here. Now in the case that there isn't a key for it, we need to, be, we need to do something there. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our username to something. So I'm going to go player prefs dot set string. I'm setting the username. The next string is what you set it to. I'm just going to call it default. And again, I'm just going to copy this line of code up here and put it underneath because now we've put something into it. We can actually display it. So next thing we're going to need is to be able to set the username from this input field. So again, we're going to use the set string. And this time, instead of using just any string that we put in, we're going to use the text from the input field. Now that we've read it in, it's usually good to set your input field back to being blank. And finally, we're going to want to display a new string in that text that we have on the side. Let's save this and go back to Unity and see how it works. I'm just going to drag the save system onto the canvas and you want to drag all of your appropriate fields in here. Now on the input field username, it already has an on end string here. Drag your canvas into it, go to save system and choose set username. So now before I plus play, I just want to say what's going to happen. So what's going to happen is it's going to go to our code and it's going to say, oh, at the moment we don't have a value, so it'll change this to default. And then when we put a string in here, it's going to be able to change that. Let's just also put my little text out of there. Let's hit play. And you can see here, it's set it to default. 
which was the value that we wanted it to have when there wasn't a value. And now if I enter a string and hit return to get to the end string, you can see it's saved. Now if I go out of play mode and back into it, you'll see this time it's saved as Joe, not as the default. So you can now see that this string is saved within our player preferences. So let's go back to our code and make this work for the for the integer and the float as well. And we'll also make clear preferences work. So let's copy this chunk of code. We'll paste it underneath and we're going to modify this to make it suit the integer. I'm just going to call it my int. Text that we're going to be changing is the text int. And instead of getting a string, we're going to be getting an integer. And you'll see it's underlined red here, and that's because you can't put an integer into a text field. So let's just use to string to fix that. Now down here, we now need to work out what our default value is going to be. So let's set int. It's going to be my int. If it doesn't have a value, we're just going to set it to zero. We can copy this line here and paste it here. And that's the integer John. So let's copy the integer. Paste it again under here, and we're just going to modify this now for the float. So that's all of our setup done. Now we're going to need to make a function which will be able to put the random integer and the random float in. Let's do the random integer first. So all I'm going to do is grab a random number between 1 and 100. I'm now going to just set that as an integer. I'm going to grab just up here. And instead of setting it to 0, I'm going to set it to round. I can grab this line. And now display my new integer. And essentially we're going to do exactly the same for the float. However, we're just going to change it from a random integer to a random float. Let's copy all of this. And let's change this to a float. And add, give the random range float so that it'll give you a random number. Now we're going to set the float to my float. We're going to change the text for float. And we're going to get the float. And there you go. So there's one more function that I want to write before we go back to Unity. And that's going to be a function to clear the preferences. Now in here we only have to do two things. One is we want to delete all of the keys. And there's a delete all function for this. Secondly, we just want to call our setup text to get all of our default values back. So save this and let's go back to Unity. Now on our button for our integer, drag the canvas in there, choose save system, Set random int. Likewise for the float. Likewise for the clear. And let's give this a go. So you can see both the integer and float have changed to zero, which are our default values. And you can now see pushing these buttons updates it. 
And if I press play to go out of play mode and go back to play mode, you can see it remembers the values. And now if I hit clear prefs, it'll put everything back to the default value. Now one thing to note is it only supports string integer and float. So if you've got a different variable type, you'll probably have to use the string and then do some sort of conversion when you put it into the string and when you take it back out of the string. And that's really all there is to player preferences. However, there's one, there's one or two more things I just want to show. I'm not going to show them working, but I would like to just talk about them so that you're aware that they're there. So let's go back and have a quick look at the code. So here where we have delete all, if you didn't want to delete everything, you could go player prefs dot delete key. And then if you commented this line out, all it would delete is the key for the integer and not the others. I don't find this function particularly useful because I would rather just set my thing back to say my integer back to zero rather than delete the key. However, there are use cases where it can be useful, so I wanted you to know about that. The other thing to note is that Unity only saves the player preferences to disks when the application closes. That normally isn't a problem, but if your application crashes, it won't save what has happened before that. And so like an example of where this might happen, say you're in a museum and you've got a display that's on 24 seven and you're using it to capture some data and the battery runs out on the device and that device doesn't go to sleep. It just crashes everything. In which case you would have lost everything that you have. So in those sorts of situations, you may want to force player preferences to save. Now to do that, you just go player prefs dot save. And then that will force a save to the disk. However, in most situations, you won't need that. It's only if you're worried about your application crashing. And generally, if your application crashes, which it shouldn't, you know, losing that little bit of data in a game isn't a big deal. So mostly you won't use this. However, if you're using it extensively for a long period of time, you may want to, at periodic times, choose to do the save. However, do know that you will get a little spike because it's doing a write to disk. So you don't necessarily want to do that in the middle of gameplay. You might do it, for example, at a checkpoint or at the end of a level. So that's all there is to player preferences. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. If you did, please like, subscribe or comment. It really helps me grow the channel. I also have an Instagram and Twitter on all of my socials down in the link tree in the bottom if you want to connect with me in any other way. I hope you enjoy your game development.